Yeah. We ready? Yep. You got good light? Yep. Good light is out. All right, good. So I was thinking, right, as I was doing this, I do a lot, a lot of lectures, right? A lot of class, a lot of periscope, a lot of YouTube videos. So I try to give different perspectives and information so that I hear the same thing over again, even though sometimes I need to hear the same thing over again and get it beat into us. But I was thinking, like, um, about today's lecture, this corner class, and, like, what is hurting our community most? Like, so we talk about the statistics, right? Without even mentioning these stats, we all know that black and brown people are doing the worst in America, right? We know that we're in the ghettos, we're the poorest, we know we're the least homeowners, least business owners, et cetera, right? And so statistics support that by saying that the wealth gap between black and white people has tripled in the last 25 years. And that the homeownership rate in the black community has been the same since 1976 up to 2012. Same home ownership rate, right? And the family, a typical family wealth of a white household is 90, over $91,000. And a typical family wealth of a black household is only $6,000. So, right, so all the stats in our environment lets us know that this, this wealth gap is real. So I want to ask you all before I even start, I already know what the answer is. What do you all think was stopping our communities from succeeding in this wealth gap, the bridging this wealth gap, and succeeding in real estate? What, what's, what's stopping us the most? Rap. Rap? Mindset. <laughs> huh? Mindset. Mindset? Lack of knowledge. Lack of applied knowledge? And I would agree with all those things. Rap is just culture. It's mentality. It's mindset, right? Listening to hip hop, etc. And what it boils down to, many people say, what stops us the most is money. We don't have enough money. We don't have capital, access to capital and resources. But people will say what stops us is credit. I ain't got no credit. Credit's bad or I don't have the time, right? Or the three things that I commonly hear as to why we can't succeed in, you know, this wealth gap. And real estate being one of the biggest triggers to build the wealth. It's the easiest, simplest business model in order to get rental income, to get appreciation of properties, to actually succeed in a business without busting your ass and having to be a, a nine to five in the rat race forever, ever, right? So we believe that real estate is an easy conduit. And so many people always ask me, like, well, Jay, is the real estate market good? And I always ask them, well, just ask your landlord, is the real estate market good? And so you're only going to be on two sides of real estate. Everything, this building right here is real estate. This gas station is real estate. And some of us are going to be the ones coming in the gas station spending money, or at the pump spending money, and some of us are going to be the ones that own the gas station benefiting from it. Everywhere that you guys go, when you leave here, the cameraman says he has a job to go to at six. I guarantee you his job is real, is real estate. His job is in a piece of real estate. And everywhere that we go tomorrow, wherever we go to a place of worship or sleep in or whatever we do, it's all gonna be real estate. The whole, this whole earth, this whole that car auction, that motel over there, everything is real estate. But it's what side of the fence are you on in the real estate equation? Are you just a consumer, are you the renter, or are you in some capacity the owner? And so I wanted to talk about the money thing at one point, right? So many of us say like, yo, we can't get involved in real estate and really take advantage of, the, of what it offers. And so I want to write that down. The three, in case for those who don't know, I want to everybody knows everything. So the three core benefits to owning real estate at any capacity, whether it's a commercial building, it's just a little old ranch house, two bedroom, one bathroom house, or a condo, now, whatever it is, there's three or four main benefits to, to owning, right? owning properties no matter on, on, on what level is first is your cash flow which is your rental income that you get from owning real estate right or from a business that operates in real estate you gain cash flow when you get one property two properties three properties four and I was saying on the conference call the other day you don't got to start off being Mr. Real Estate you don't got to own the whole block if we all made it our goal like yo I'm going to just own one property every three years I'm making my goal that every three years, I'm going to try to grab one property. Just one. Every two years, just one property. By the time you look for 10 years, you've got 10 properties bringing you in cash flow. If you got 10 properties that's giving you five, 500 even $500 a month in monthly cash flow, right? After you pay your mortgage, taxes, insurance, your tenants, your profits, just $500 a month. Even if it took you 10 years with one property every two years, you'd be at $5,000 a month in cash flow. That means money that works for you, a property and business that works for you without you working. 
that's sixty thousand a year. We think you ain't rich, but you got sixty thousand a year coming in that you ain't got to work for. Just by being intentional about yo, instead of me worrying about how many J's I got, what kind of fly belt I got, how many bottles I pop in the club, or trying to impress people, if you made it, that's where the mentality part comes in, and rap music and culture comes in. If we made it our priority and stop trying to impress due to our culture and said, yo, me, my family, like any queen that I mess with, like I don't care about being red bottom she got, I don't care about all that, like baby, we got a, we, we grab a one every two years. We, go, we part of my clan, we part of my clique. We do a one every two years and two every two years if we can. All because one day, not only do you get the cash off the properties, but you get the appreciation. Pardon my writing. You get the appreciation of the properties, which is your property going up in value over time. That's your equity, right? So maybe your first year you bought this property over here, right in this area, you got it for $100,000, right? Simple little property, $100,000. But now, during your 10-year plan, right? That's what it's about, having a, a plan. So it's living for the moment, not just YOLO, blow money fast. You blow money fast, you don't go broke fast. You save money fast, you're gonna get richer. All culture, right? So if you bought this property for hundred thousand dollars today, in ten years, if this property just went up by twenty percent in ten years. You talk about it's now worth one twenty. So you now got twenty grand in equity in this property, right? Twenty k. Could be thirty, could be forty, but just say twenty. But mind you, you did five of these in ten years, one every other year. So now you got five properties with twenty thousand dollars equity appreciation. Right, twenty thousand. That's a hundred thousand dollars now in equity that you have, plus your sixty grand a year you got coming in, five thousand a month in cash flow. So now you sit on a little something, you're doing a little something, and now you can take that hundred grand equity and you can refinance that and go start a business, or go buy more real estate, or go get a commercial real estate, or go partners with the brother sitting next to you, and y'all go half in a bigger piece of real estate, right? Using the appreciation, and now you're leveraging your cash flow for your financial freedom. And then the third benefit from real estate is also your tax breaks. So now if you work in a nine to five or if you're an entrepreneur, even in the meanwhile, not only are you getting cash flow, not only are you getting appreciation, but now you're getting crazy tax write-offs from the maintenance on the properties, the interest on the mortgage. You're getting all these tax advantages that are now giving you more earned income. On top of your 60 grand, a year on top of your appreciation, let alone the feeling of swag you're gonna have being the owner and being the boss and being the lord of your land. And those are the perks that are the core principles of why we know real estate works. And then the fourth being this. It's just easy. It's just easy to do, ain't no guesswork. It's a one, two, three formula to owning and benefiting from real estate. So I want to talk a little bit about exactly how that formula works. Hey Stacey, you grab that uh, water off the car for me, please. Thank you. I want to do this. So one of the biggest reasons why we say we don't get into real estate, is one of the first ones, thank you. Is because we say like, yo, we ain't got no money. Like, you know, we're money type, we're trying to figure it out. We don't have enough money. So we gonna dispel the money myth. You don't need that much money to own real estate, and that's where you the applied knowledge part comes in. If we knew better, we could do better. A lot of times, I know even for me, when I first got in the game. And a brother asked me earlier when I asked, I came in a few hours ago to ask the owner to put his class here. And I gave a brother um one of the kings my car. He said, he was like, he's like, he's like, yo, bro, he was like, everybody charged for real estate seminars. He said, why you wanna be here for free? I said, cause I said I'm a former three-time felon with two and a half years in prison. And I said, I had success in real estate, I love my people, and I want to give it back. So I wanna do it in the hood. We have a boot camp that we're doing tomorrow that's going to be eight hours. We have an eight hour boot camp tomorrow in Dallas where we're going to be doing training, walking through properties, doing that's that, 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 that cost. You got to pay for that. But I'm not going to neglect, I'm not going to neglect the opportunity to be able to, 
I'm not going to neglect the opportunity to be able to come out here and spend my off day on a Saturday in Dallas to get back to my people at the same time. And so for me, I know back when I was hustling, I've been hustling from, uh, I was hustling from the time I was 15 to 25, I sold drugs. Dropped out of high school when I was 16, and the dope game was my life. That's all I cared about. And I wanted to get rich and die trying. That's all I knew. And I'm still getting rich and die trying. I'm just getting rich legally. But in this process, when I thought about buying real estate, I just thought you needed like 30, 40, 50, $100,000. Like nobody explained the mortgage to me. I didn't know that you only needed three and a half percent down to buy a property. I didn't know you needed you get probably ten percent down, or you could buy a building for thirty percent down, but use private partners and private money. And so, because we don't learn this at home, and we damn sure don't learn it in school, so where the hell do we learn this at? Where our competition and our counterparts from other nationalities they learn it at home. They get the game early. They don't get that game. You grab that game. So, when it comes to money. When it comes to buying your own property, right, an owner-occupied property, a property that you're gonna live in, this is the dope part about it. And for most loans, you only need three and a half percent to five percent down on a property. Meaning that a hundred thousand dollar property, the same one we talked about, which is a decent home out here in Houston. For a hundred thousand dollar property, you only need thirty-five hundred dollars. Thirty-five hundred dollars down payment. Who the hell can't come up with $3,500? For real, for real. Even if it's slow grind, you can go get Burger King come up with that. If you're intentional about it. Or if you just 5%, that's 5,000 down on a $100,000 property. That will gain you cash flow over time and will gain you equity. Here's the other part about that applied knowledge. We don't even know, we don't even utilize the fact that in qualifying for a mortgage, we could use our Section 8, you know, government vouchers, disability, VA, any of those kind of pensions, all could be used to qualify for a mortgage. Your Section 8 don't gotta be used, just the rent. That same money get applied for you qualifying for a mortgage or any kind of government subsidies. All that could be used towards you owning one day getting cash flow appreciation and having a family asset to pass down one day. Because by show of hands real quick, who here lives somewhere? Everybody gotta live somewhere unless you're living under the bridge. You live somewhere, but if you rent, at the end of the year, if you spend a thousand a month in rent, or five hundred a month in rent, or two thousand a month in rent, how much you get back at the end of the year? How much value you gain from your rent? How much tax advantage did you get from your rent? How much cash flow did you get from your rent? What the fuck does that mean? It don't make no. It only makes sense as a temporary move to get the ownership. It's time, place, the rent. You might be getting your life together, getting your credit together, getting your stacking your money up. But your end goal should always be to find out, this is what I call, right? So this is on the money side. The end goal what I call working backwards, what they call reverse engineering, right? What I call working backwards. And all working backwards is if any, once you get the mindset that, you know what, I'm cool with being cool, I'm cool with being fly, and I like having fun and all those kind of things, but more than that, you gotta have a passion about family legacy and ownership and, 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 and passing something down to your family, and having something greater for yourself. So when you get that passion, you get that bug that like, yo, I just don't wanna be normal, I just don't wanna be poor, I just wanna be, I don't wanna accept my environment, my circumstance. When you get that passion, you now can start working backwards towards your real estate goal. It might be two years away, it might be three, six years away. But you work walking towards it. If you'll never walk towards it or work backwards, but I say back into it, you'll never actually get there. You'll just be spinning in circles on a on a rat race. Because it's not a priority to you. Your priority is just what car can I get? What crib can I get? Don't get it wrong, cars feel good. You pull up a lot in a nice car, you feel good. In our community, we think the person with the hot car is the person with the money, right? If I pulled up here in a Lambo, y'all be like, he got that check. But y'all ain't know I could have been the valet just pulling up and get some gas. <laughs> you sweating the guy with the light in the Lambo, and all he is the valet for the hotel. Because you have a nice car, don't mean you have wealth. Because you got a nice chain or a nice earring, don't mean you got money or wealth. It just means you got a nice thing. You would have found the nice earring and put it in your ear, like, oh, snap, I got a VS stone. Now you blinging. Shorty, what